Hey everyone, well, we are going to be starting chapter 5 and so we have finally reached the point where after all of this derivative work we are now going to start working our way backwards and that's something that's quite common in math. You learn to go one direction and then you reverse it. Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing. So let's take a look at this. So let f of x equal 2x. Uh, we're going to find a function whose derivative is 2x. So we've, get, we've been given the derivative so what was the original function? And they specifically wanted it to be capital F of X. So whose derivative is 2X? X squared. So now we're gonna, this is the type of thing that we're gonna be doing. So this function capital F is the antiderivative of that our initial function little f. So here's our definition for it. So it's an antiderivative of a function f on an interval i if the derivative of capital F of x is equal to little f of x. Okay, so now look at this uh, our answer from example one. So is this the only function that we could ever come up with? Well, no, there should be other ones. So let's look at like this one. How about x squared plus two? That would work because its derivative is also two x. Well, let's find a different one. How about like x squared minus 75? That would work too. So in actuality, there's gonna be infinitely many <laughs> functions that we could come up with whose derivative is gonna be that 2x because you could just change this constant at the end because the derivative of any constant is always gonna be zero. So that's gonna require us to put this extra little thing at the end of it since we can always change it. It's like, well, which function do we want? So we have to be able to represent all of them uh, in one function. <clears throat> so if capital F is an antiderivative of little f on an interval i, then capital G is also an antiderivative of little f on the interval i, if and only if that G is of the form capital F of x plus c where c is a constant. So this is what we're gonna be using to represent like the family of antiderivatives. Uh, so it accounts for like having that extra constant uh, at the end, because you don't know what it is. So you just put this plus c in there. <clears throat> okay, so for example, knowing that the derivative of x to the third is three x squared, you can represent the family of all antiderivatives by letting g of x equal x to the third plus c. Okay, so example two, find the function g that will represent the family of this function. So that would be x to the fourth plus c. Uh, for part b, for that cosine, whose derivative is cosine? Well, that would have to be sine. And then to get the family of all of them, you put that plus c at the end. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and look at some other definitions here and get those filled in. Okay, so this one we just kind of did in that example. Uh, if f is 3x squared, then its antiderivative is x to the third plus c. So for number one, the c value is called the constant of integration. Number two, that g of x so this whole thing, this antiderivative, is the general solution of 
of that differential equation. And it's a general solution because of the plus c. You don't know exactly what the c is, so it's just in general terms. If you didn't know it, that would be the particular solution. Okay, number three. Uh, that's going to deal with this little phrase right there, differential equation. Uh, and this should have said in terms of x and y. Is an equation that involves x, y, and derivatives of y. So for instance, y prime equals 3x, y prime equals x squared plus 6. Those are all different or, or types of differential equations. You could even do uh, x, y minus 3y prime is equal to 7. That's another one. You've got x and y running around uh, as well as the derivative of y. Most of these come from, if you remember, like when you saw this type of stuff, that was coming from like implicit differentiation. <clears throat> okay, so let's do this last example and then we'll stop the video. So find the general solution. So whose derivative is 4x? Well, that would have to be 2x squared, and then put your plus c. So that plus c, you're always going to put it. And then this one, 2x to the negative third. So whose derivative is this? Well, if we kind of reverse that power rule, x to the negative 2, but I wanted it to be a positive. So when I pull this down, I got to cancel out that negative. So negative x to the negative 2, uh, or you can flip it. Oops, I forgot my plus c. Plus c. Okay, so that's a pretty good intro to this antiderivative stuff.